I've been a fan of The Witcher games ever since the first one was released in 2007. I played through it and the second game when it came out on PC. In 2015 I of course got The Witcher 3 as well, but due to various reasons I stopped playing it about a quarter or maybe a third of the way through and never really finished it. With longer games like that I find myself often having difficulties jumping back in after a long hiatus because I forget a lot of gameplay functions and not to mention the storyline. So what I did was get the Switch version because of its PC and Switch cross-save capability. If you've been following the channel for a while, you probably knew I wasn't going to just abandon the PC experience. My thinking is handheld Switch for some generic side quests, PC for the main story, or when I want to immerse myself with the graphics. But another reason for getting it is because I want to see firsthand how the game translates onto the Switch. I find those technical sort of things interesting. So instead of being a full-blown review of the game in general, it's more like a showcase of my specific experience with the port. But before getting into that, let's take a look at what comes in the box. Yes, it actually comes with stuff. It's not perhaps, you know, as grand as what the PC version gets, but it's certainly pretty good. Seeing Switch games in boxes like these isn't too uncommon. Nintendo has done something similar with some of their first-party games several months after launch. Once we open the box, we can find two things inside, the game itself as well as some literature. This isn't actually the first time I unboxed this, hence the lack of plastic or the shrink wrap. But what I found odd is that the game cartridge was upside down in the case. Makes me wonder if it's a machine or a person who puts it in. Or maybe I just accidentally got an Australian market version. The envelope type thing includes a few things. A nice little thank you message from CD Projekt Red. I always liked and respected their attitude when it comes to DRM and providing updates for their games. This seemed to show a lot of goodwill to their customers and fans, which is something other companies could learn from. There's a couple of stickers. The next one's a bit interesting. It's the Witcher Universe Compendium, times two, apparently. Both have the same content, but one is in English and French, while the other is just in English. A bit of a strange move. Why not just have one, you know, for each language? Either way, you can read up on lore, which is nice. Unfortunately, it's not in color. The map is excellent. It's not printed on, you know, special paper or anything, but the design is really nice. It reminds me of the Morrowind map. The style isn't a 100% accurate, but it's really artistic and creative with how each area's personality is portrayed. It's just fun to look at. Also, there's a weathered paper design on the back. Not something you see every day. I did an unboxing of the PC version about five years ago. Only about 200 or so people have seen that video because that was early days. That version comes with a few more things like a poster, steelbook, soundtrack, and medallion. But the map is the same as the Switch version. There's a thank you note, which looks a bit different, and there's also the stickers. And the compendium seems to be the same in terms of content, even though the form factor is a bit different. But yeah, the Switch version is still pretty good overall with what you get. I like it, and I'm sure people who bought it got a bit of extra enjoyment from it. People call the Switch port of The Witcher 3 the best Switch port ever. That's both true and false at the same time, depending on how you look at it. In theory, the best port would be as close as possible to the best version of the game, but the Switch version is obviously much worse looking. It's very blurry if you're playing on a TV or a monitor. I think the reason people say it's one of the best Switch ports is that a lot of graphical fanciness has been preserved on the Switch version, which I agree with. Just walking around, you can see the trees and grass moving, the beams of light going through the tree branches. It's technically very impressive considering how big of a game it is and what sort of hardware this is running on. Plus, it kind of proves that a lot of developers just don't want to go through the effort or invest their money porting their games. What's also impressive is that you can even change graphics settings, which is definitely a rarity with console games. These are what my settings are at. Personally, I find these settings the best. I would advise going against maxing out the sharpening setting the graphics start to look a bit blobby. A bit like what the Marseille M Classic upsampler did to some of the games. It's a bit too much, I played around with a filter in Photoshop. I mean, look at that tree. But honestly, I'm not gonna play the game in docked mode. Like I said, handheld Switch, big screen PC. That's what I'm going for. Given the screen size of the Switch, a lot of the port's graphical shortcomings just aren't that big of a deal. Pixelated graphics and low res textures just aren't as apparent when playing handheld. Yes, it's visible, but it's not really a big deal for me. That being said, the most important part, which is the atmosphere and feel, does come across. That's really what's most important when you want to have an immersive experience. Performance-wise, the game runs at 30 FPS quite consistently. 
I noticed some slowdowns in cutscenes, but I don't think it's that bad. It plays just fine. The cross save function is really easy to access. You have to log into Steam or in my case with my GOG account, and then you can load your cloud save or upload your save game from the Switch to GOG or Steam. It's probably best to try and make a conscious effort to upload your save game after every time you stop playing on the Switch. That way you don't create a split timeline by accident. I'm very much used to keyboard and mouse controls, so it's a bit weird playing this game with a controller to be honest. But what's helpful is that the game tells you which buttons do what, so that makes switching between the two versions much easier for me. Some of you may be wondering if you need the Complete Edition on the PC for cross-save, because the Switch game is called the Complete Edition, but the answer to that is no. It will work with the regular version. I ended up getting the Complete Edition anyway, just because it was on sale and it was cheaper than if I bought the DLC separately. So yeah, those are my impressions of the Switch version of The Witcher 3. A great experience overall, and the game even comes with a few goodies that you normally don't get with non-limited edition games. I hope that was helpful or interesting. Let me know what you think. I'm also curious to see if anybody else got the Switch version of the game because of the cross-save function. If you liked the video, please consider becoming a YouTube channel member or a Patreon supporter. I also have a Twitter account. Right now we have a little bit more than 900 followers, so it'd be cool to see if we can maybe reach 1000. The links to everything are in the description. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again in the next video.